This week in digital photography, we're going to be taking a look at the basics of exposure using those three variables of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO to get just the right amount of light into your images. We know that all photography requires some sort of light to create an exposure, but not all images require the same amount of light. Our cameras are built with light meters inside of them and they measure the amount of light that's being reflected back to the camera. From there, the photographer has to adjust the three variables of exposure to give the image just the right amount of light. If we look at the diagram and compare it to the way that our cameras work, the pipeline would represent the barrel of the lens. The width of the opening determines how quickly water or light can pass through. The stopwatch represents the shutter speed or the amount of time that we allow the lens to be open. Leaving the valve open for a longer time allows more water to pass through, just as leaving the sensor open will allow more light to pass through. The bowl in the diagram is the collector of the water, just like the sensor in your camera is the collector of light. Just how big the bowl is, is an indicator of how much water we need to collect. Likewise, your camera, the capacity of the sensor dictates how much light we need in order to create an exposure. Sensors can be adjusted to be more or less sensitive to light, which we've talked about last week. Adjusting the sensitivity is done by simply adjusting the ISO rating in the camera's menus. The exposure triangle can sometimes look a little intimidating for new photographers, but it really doesn't need to. It's simply a graphic representation that shows that all three variables are linked together, and changing one requires an equal change in one or both of the other variables to achieve the same exposure. There's an old phrase when you're building a house, you can build it fast, you can build it cheap, or you can build it high quality, but you can't have all three. If you want it cheap, you're likely going to sacrifice some quality. If you want it to be good quality and get it fast, well, be ready to pay the big bucks. The same can be said for photography. You can adjust all three variables, but you need to prioritize what's most important. So let's take a look at the readout when you look through the viewfinder on your camera. Every camera will be a little different, but you'll usually see the same sorts of data within the viewfinder, just arranged a little differently. In the upper left, we see the M that tells us that we are in manual exposure mode. On the bottom, we see 1 2000, which is our shutter speed. And next to that, we see F4, which tells us the aperture. We also see that the ISO is currently set to 100. The last thing I want to point out right now is the light meter reading on the right side of the image. As it stands now, the hash mark shows that our exposure combination is set to zero, which indicates average tonality. If we see that hash mark slide up to, into the plus side, it means that our image will be overall brighter than average. If the hash mark slides down into the negative side, the image will be darker, receiving less exposure. And remember, we can adjust any or all of the exposure variables to affect that hash mark. Let's take a look at the four basic exposure modes on your camera. On most DSLRs, you'll see a mode dial that looks kind of like these. In this image, we see a mode dial from Canon on the top and Nikon on the bottom. And I'm sure that Sony and other brands will have similar dials. When we rotate the dial to the M position, we are telling the camera that we want full manual control. When we do this, we are able to adjust the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture all independently. To do this, you as the photographer will need to pay attention to the light meter readout and select settings that will give you the image you want. There's a bit of a learning curve because setting the variables so that the light meter reads zero will work for average toned images, but you may decide to increase or decrease the exposure for a lighter or darker image. If we rotate the dial to the AV or A position, what we're doing is prioritizing the aperture. You're telling the camera, I want to set the aperture to get a particular depth of field, but I'll let the camera select the shutter speed that will zero out the light meter. If getting a really narrow or a really broad depth of field is the most important factor in your image, you might want to choose to shoot in aperture priority mode and then set an aperture that will give you the look that you're shooting for. The camera will set the shutter speed automatically. The S or TV mode stands for shutter or time value mode. In this mode, you're prioritizing a shutter speed 
to achieve a particular look and letting the camera set the aperture that will zero out the light meter. This is common for sports and action photographers who need a really fast shutter speed, regardless of the depth of field. Likewise, in long exposure photography, you wanna leave the shutter open for a longer time, but the aperture may not be as important to you. This might be a scene at the lake, for example, where you want a long exposure to blur the wave action. P stands for program mode. And essentially, when you set the camera to P, you are turning your camera into a point and shoot camera. The camera itself will select both the shutter speed and the aperture to give you a decent image. This is really limiting, however, as the camera really has no idea what you're making images of. It's very much a random crapshoot as to what you'll get in P mode. In addition to P mode, you'll see a variety of different icons that will indicate various themed exposure modes. These themed modes are basically the same thing as P mode, except that you're telling the camera a little bit more about what you're shooting. Set the dial to flash off mode, and the camera simply won't turn on the flash, even if it's dark out. Set it on the person icon and you're saying, I'm shooting a portrait now. And the camera will dial in a wider aperture to give you that narrow depth of field and the blurry background that people love. In mountain mode, you're saying, I'm shooting landscapes now. And the camera will dial in a narrow aperture to get the whole scene in sharp focus, as long as nothing is moving from the long exposures. Okay, so we've talked about zeroing out the light meter to get an average tone, but what does that really mean? If we were to take all of the colors and all the light and the dark in the scene and blend them all up together in a bucket, we would get the average tonality or the density of that image. But we know that some images are darker than average and others are brighter than average. And when we point our camera at the scene, the camera doesn't know what we're shooting, but it does know that most scenes are on average, not super bright, not super dark. So the engineers who built your camera have calibrated the light meter to zero out at what is known as neutral gray. In this graphic, we see the zone system, which was created by photographer Ansel Adams in 1940. Essentially what he said is that scenes can range from pure black to pure white and all shades and colors in between. By adding or subtracting light using your shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, we can lighten or darken our final images to suit the scene. The scale you see here shows 11 zones, from zero being black, zone five being middle gray, and zone 10 being pure white. So let's see how this works. If we look at the image of this rabbit, we can guess that it would be a fairly average neutral density image. Not very dark, not very bright, but kind of average. If we aim our camera at this scene, the camera will set an exposure com combination that will give you an average density which will work pretty well in this case. Let's take a look at another example. Here we see a downy woodpecker on a feeder with a field of white snow in the background. Looking at the zone system, it's fair to say that this scene is definitely brighter than average, probably somewhere around a zone eight. If we let our cameras pick the exposure combination for us though, it's going to darken the overall image so that it records on the sensor at a zone five, because that's what this light meter is calibrated to do. When we shoot it, the image at zone five, it's going to be three zones too dark. And as a result, the image gets underexposed. The same principle applies here. The scene is clearly darker than average, say about a zone one with very few details. If we let the camera set the exposure, it's going to brighten the entire scene to zone five. And now it overexposes the scene by one, two, three, four stops, rendering our black background now is neutral gray. This would be considered an overexposure. The good news is that cameras also provide you with an exposure compensation button, which allows you to dial in and edit to the exposure. Say for example, you are shooting on aperture value mode and the camera suggested to shoot this image at F4 for 1 60th of a second. We can use the exposure compensation to subtract four stops of light by simply holding the button and rotating the dial to minus four. The camera will take care of the rest. It'll maintain the aperture of F4 and then bump the shutter speed four stops faster to make the scene darker. So if we start at 1 60th of a second, then one stop would be 1 1 20th of a second. Two stops would be 1 2 40th of a second. Three stops would be 1 480th of a second. 
and four stops would be one 960th of a second. Now, cameras will generally round the numbers a bit, so the camera would end up shooting the scene at one 1,000th of a second at f4 to give us the silhouetted image. Determining an appropriate amount of exposure compensation is a matter of practice. It's something that you learn over time until you can look at a scene and say, hmm, I think this needs about one stop of overexposure to bring up the way my eyes see it. The good news is that with digital, you can take a guess and see instantly if you've made enough compensation or if you need to adjust it a little further. So that will wrap up this first video on exposure. Go ahead and head back to the Moodle and open up the next video on exposure part two, where we'll dive into uh, reading histograms and understanding light metering patterns. Talk to you soon.